bless you. It's good to be back tonight. Let's have a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you for tonight. We thank you for the gift of life. Father, thank you for taking us into a new month. Glory be to your holy name. You began this year with us. You have been with us from January up to this 11th month. We honor you and we adore you. Thank you for the gift of life. Tonight, oh Lord, whatever we have done, whatever we have said, imagined, thought, decisions we've taken that are against your will, we ask for mercy. Have mercy. Wash us and cleanse us, purge us and purify us in your precious blood. Tonight, right now, I take authority and dominion in the realms of the spirit. I declare an embargo and a curfew and I stop every assignment of wickedness against the service tonight in Jesus' name. And the power and the principality assigned against anyone tonight to abort their uh, prayer, to intercept their testimony. Holy Ghost, fire, arrest, and consume them now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh Lord, you are welcome. Take the highest seat. Glorify yourself. Manifest your power. Speak to us through your word and Power somebody, save somebody, heal, deliver, and restore. That at the end we'll be careful to give you all the praise. We thank you, Father, as your servant. I yield myself to you. Take a hold of me and speak through me. Uh. Let your name alone be glorified tonight. We thank you, Lord, for testimonies. Thank you for answered prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody, you can shout the loud amen wherever you are. Glory be to God. Amen. It's good to see you again. It's good to be back. Amen. God bless you for joining tonight for today, for this virtual service. Hallelujah. All the, the finances, the data you are spending on the, this virtual service. May the Lord remember you. I also want to appreciate all of you, the elders, the pastors, deacons, trustees, workers of the house, musicians. God bless you for the Tremendous work you are doing. Media team, God bless you. You are doing a great work. Hallelujah. God bless you richly. I also want to uh, appreciate Pastor Kinsley for the wonderful and great work. God bless you. More grace, more anointing. I also want to thank our pastor for the opportunity given me to be a blessing to God's people. God bless you, Pastor Tay. Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you one more time for tuning in tonight. I know tonight is going to be a night of blessing. You are going... You are not living here the same. Amen. From last week, we saw a lot. We wrapped up the fasting and prayer. Amen. And um, we are continuing tonight. We are taking a text from the book of Luke. Luke chapter 17 from verse 28. Let me read from verse 28 to 32. Hallelujah. Let's hear the reading of the word of God. Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sowed, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day he which is upon the house top and his staff in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return. Verse 32, remember Lot's wife. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. Let your word be ignited. Let your word be illuminated in our hearts tonight. Let the entrance of your word give light. Let somebody receive that light tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, give us understanding to your word that we will live here empowered and equipped. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory be to God. So this is Jesus speaking in parables and and t telling them about the end time and what, what is happening, what will happen at the end time, and that they have to be aware and they be, to be watched and to be vigilant about incidents and about things that will happen. And after he has said a lot, he made a very strong statement that remember Lot's wife, remember Lot's wife, Lot's wife from her background, we know she comes from a wealthy background, so she has enjoyed life in the world outside of God himself. Um, 
<laughs> so when Jesus is saying, let's remember Lot's wife, it's not about her, you know, credentials or about her wealth or about her influence, but there is something very notable that Jesus is talking about. So when we go back to the book of Genesis, let's look at Genesis 19, verse 16 and 17. Hallelujah. Let me quickly go. Genesis chapter 19. Amen. Verse 16 and 17. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, And he lingered, and the men laid hold upon his hand, and upon the hand of his wife, and upon the hand of his two daughters, and the Lord being merciful unto him. And they brought him forth, and set him out without they set him without a city. And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad, and that he said, Escape for thy life. Look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. And Lord said unto them, Oh, not so, my Lord. Behold, and so the commandment that was given was that do not look back. Hallelujah. So there is a commandment. God has given a commandment that you are going out of Sodom. Do not look back. There are a lot that we can learn from this parable. Glory be to God. When we go, let, let's join some, something else from the book of Joshua. Joshua chapter 1. You see, the children of Israel had been in Israel 400. They've, they've been in Egypt 400 years in bondage extra 30 years because there was an excuse when they came out they were going towards the red sea because of the mighty hand of the lord they had to come out of bondage pharaoh who who, who could not stand the might and the power of god had to leave them they went they got to the red sea pharaoh said that i will pursue i will overtake he went he was pursuing but the lord became a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire between them so that they, they, there was a, a gap they could not catch up even as we have prayed and fasted for last month your deliverance has been released. Your testimony is released. Your prayer has been answered. But whenever the prophetic word is released, whenever your testimony comes forth, the enemy says that, ah, let me go after that prophetic word again to make sure it doesn't manifest. Let me go after that testimony so that the testimony will be halfway. So my brother, sister, listening to me, after your fasting and your prayer, God has answered you, but you need to still wage a warfare to maintain your testimony to maintain that deliverance because the enemy does not rest he will rise up again like Pharaoh and say I will pursue again Aha. but glory be to God no matter how they rise up and pursue when you stand still in persistent prayer and consistency the enemy cannot abort your testimony and will know what happened in the Red Sea they drowned out Pharaoh and the armies of Israel now when they got into the wilderness there was one thing that was prevalent among among them stubbornness, rebelliousness, and disobedience. So the new generation, they realize that, that what delayed their fathers, what caused them to die in the wilderness, what made them wander in that wilderness for 40 years before getting to the promised land. Ah, it was something that they should not overlook. It was something that they did not want to repeat. So they told Joshua that our fathers did certain mistakes in the wilderness and which has delayed us for 40 years. We are not going to repeat those mistakes. So Joshua, whoever would disobey the commandment and disobey the direction and leadership you give us, we will cut the person, we will cut them, bend that person and stone them to death. So this was a generation who were determined that they will make it. They were determined that they will not be delayed in life. They were determined that things that will set them back will not this that set back a generation ahead of them uh, will not set them back. Uh. So number one, the prevailed what prevailed among the fathers was that there was stubbornness, there was rebelliousness, and there was disobedience. In the wilderness, they would tell Moses, why did you take us out of bondage? We were enjoying our bondage. We were enjoying his sickness. We were enjoying poverty. Why did you take us out for Pharaoh to pursue us? Why did you take us out for us to, to, what, to test? Why did you take us out for us to, to, to go through challenges? We wish we were back in Egypt in bondage where we would have been eating good food. Hallelujah. Let it not be somebody's testimony. That's 
you wish you were back in the world. Uh, that you will say, uh, when I came into Christ, uh, I have faced crisis. Uh, when you accept Jesus, uh, you enjoy the glory and you enjoy, you have to, uh, and you have to endure the cross as well. Uh, they could not endure the pain. Uh, they could not endure the cross. Uh, so they wish they were back in Egypt. Uh, and because of that, uh, they wandered for 10 years. Uh, and God what, and made all that generation to become extinct. Uh, let it not be your portion. Uh, so this new generation said we will not walk in the wilderness. We will not wander 40 years. Uh, we don't have 40 years of our life to spend, uh, to be delayed before we get to our promised land. Uh, so we are determined uh, uh, that we will not make those mistakes. Uh, so when Jesus is saying, remember Lord's wife, uh, we have to look at some things uh, that she made, uh, that made her lose her life, uh, that made her not get to the promise. Uh. So remembering Lord's wife, number one, uh, I've lifted three, uh, disobedience, it, when, we, when we connect it, disobedience ran through what happened to the fathers who lost their life. They were cold and they were careless. So in the book of Revelation, uh, it said that I wish that you were either cold or you were hot. If you have to be cold, you need to be cold. If you will be hot, you must be hot. But many of us have become lukewarm. Our feet, one is in the church and one is in the world. One is, we think we are in Christ. No, you can't put one foot in Christ. We are one foot in church and one foot in the world. And we, we are so religious that Paul will say, we have become religious. We are form of godliness but we have denied the power thereof so last week we talked about the power we need the power we have denied the power and we have become religious and we have become so godly a form of godliness and Jesus says that you have become like a whitewashed sepulchre the outside is so clean and beautiful but the inside is full of dead man's bones so number one cold when we look at a, a background, uh, Abraham was a man who was, who, he was a friend of God. He had the relationship. Uh, he, and everywhere Abraham goes, he built altars. Uh, but Lot, when he had the opportunity, he looked at Sodom and he chose Sodom. He had something in mind. He said that, let me go close to Sodom, but I will not be a practicer of what they do. Let me go close to Sodom. Uh, I, will, I will not partake of of their own sacrifices. Let me go close to Sodom, but I will still be prayerful. My brother, my sister, you have to be vigilant. You won't see fire and go and put your hand in. So he went close to Sodom, thinking that, oh, he will enjoy the riches and the blessing and the fame and the popularity, but he will still want to be with God. It doesn't work like that. Either you serve God or you serve Mammon. And because he went close his wife who was not rooted in the word, who was not knowledgeable in the word, who did not know God for herself, got entangled with the things of Sodom. Sodom entered into her. Oh, how glory be to God. And when destruction was coming, God said, I am going to destroy Sodom. But there is somebody there I have located called Lot. Though he is not perfect, I will give him a little bit of righteousness. Righteousness means right standing with God. So somebody listening to me, you might not be perfect. You have flaws. You have deficiencies. But in the midst of these deficiencies, God is making you perfect. So he will take you through the furnace. Um, before you smell um, the aroma and the scent of bread, uh, this bread has to go through the oven process, uh, has to go through fire. So until you go through the fire, you will not get near to perfection. So somebody will step on your toes. Uh, somebody will say something to hurt you. Uh, we are all in the process of getting there. Gloria. Uh, and Mrs. Lotham, uh, from her background of 
wealth and influence and affluence uh, got entangled with the things of Sodom. Now the angels came uh, and they said, Lord, you have to take your family away. But this woman has become cold in the things uh, that she could not differentiate between a proper revival uh, and what the world uh, that, uh, 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 differentiate that this is a revival and this is the world in the church. Uh. So nowadays we see clowns, clowns in the pulpit. Uh, we see comedians in the pulpit. Uh, it has become so normal uh, that we don't see the move of God anymore. Hallelujah. But glory be to God. Uh, God still gave them chances. Uh. So when we got Jesus said that remember Lord's wife, uh, we have another chance to set things in order. We have another opportunity. Uh. So don't go cold. Uh. May the fire of the word of the Lord uh, be ignited in you tonight in the name of Jesus. Um. She became careless. Huh? Why? Because she has, why she, she had the opportunity. Abraham was a prayerful man, uh, but Lot uh, missed those opportunities. As we heard some time back about Gehazi, Gehazi could have gained the triple portion of the anointing, but he missed the opportunity. Many are serving in the Lord. Many are serving in churches, and uh, many are doing the work of God, uh, but. They they are not well, because they think they are close to the pulpit or, or they think they are serving the Lord. Uh, they have made it. No, uh, it is you have to be at right standing with God uh, and the opportunity to make it uh, that your soul will not be lost. Uh, so Jesus giving this parable uh, is telling us that our soul is extremely important to him. He doesn't wish for our soul to be lost uh, and therefore every opportunity you have have, uh, get right with God. Uh, every opportunity you have, uh, be in right standing with God. Uh, go according to His will and His commandment. Uh, we can do God a service, uh, but without His will, uh, we have heard about this sermon time and time and over again. Uh, that Uzzah, when the ark of the Lord was being brought back home, uh, and they all stumbled, uh, he wanted to hold the ark, uh, and God struck him. Uh, in that day, many shall come and they'll say Lord I cast out devils in your name I healed the sick I did miracles and they'll say depart from me you workers of iniquity this is what, what Jesus is saying is you have to be the personal relationship with Jesus as Lord of your life this is what Lord's wife missed so she was careless about this you can be an usher you can be a leader, you can be a pastor, but if you have no, if you are not saved, you can stand and be effective because the gifts and the callings are without revocation. Even he gave gifts to the children of disobedience, so we have become so careless in the things of God. And one time. Uh, it got to a place uh, where God has given a commandment uh, to uh, from Samuel to Saul uh, that you have to go. There are Malachites. Go and wipe all of them away uh, because I got I know what I am doing. Uh, and when Saul got there, uh, he saw the oxen and the fat ones uh, and he said, I want to offer a sacrifice unto the Lord. Uh, the sacrifice is good. Yes. Uh, offering sacrifices is good. Serving the Lord is good. Uh, but you have to do it in according to his will and his purpose. So he brought the cattle and he said, I am going to sacrifice unto the Lord because the Lord loves sacrifice. And when Prophet Samuel came and he heard the bleating of the cattle and he said, what have you done? And he said, oh, when I went, I saw this cattle. I know God loves sacrifice. So I want to sacrifice unto him. And he said, does God delight in sacrifices more than obedience? So obedience to the word and the will and the commandment of God is more than sacrificing to him. So God, the angel said, when you are going, do not look back. Do not look back. But in her heart, she already looked back. Because Sodom was inside of her. 
Egypt was in them. They were out of Egypt, but Egypt was inside of them. Somebody listening to me, huh? tonight as you have even taken up the cross, there is no looking back. Huh? Many can look, many are looking back and say, ah, when I was in the world, huh? this and this, huh? I was successful. Huh? I was, things were peaceful. Huh? There was no attacks on my life. Huh? Yes, it was because you were in that kingdom of darkness. Huh? So the demons will not attack you. But once you have come out into another kingdom, there is an opposition. There is a warfare going on. So when you are in the kingdom of light, you will face opposition from the kingdom of darkness. But glory be to God, you are already victorious. And no power of the devil can overthrow you. But obedience to God's word is better than to sacrifice. Hallelujah. And because of disobedience, he lost the throne. God was about to establish his throne and his family forever. But because of disobedience, he lost it. Somebody listening to me tonight. May the Lord have mercy upon us. May the Lord help us to be in right standing with the Lord. To obey him more than to sacrifice. To obey his commandment and to walk in his will. So we learn a lot from Lot's wife. That she saw the opportunity of having Abraham serving God. But she missed it. Even at one time there, there was the, the husband was captured and Abraham to, had to come and de re deliver the husband. These were opportunities she had, but she missed them. So Jesus is telling us that our soul is paramount and we have an opportunity, a better one than Lot's wife had. So if we are alive today and we are remembering Lot's wife, she did not go and steal. She did not go and commit adultery. She did not go and kill. Just looking back, disobeying the commandment of God, she lost her life. She lost her life. Her soul was lost. So Jesus is saying that the things that we easily overlook, those are the things that will cost us. Unforgiveness, backbiting, you can name all of them. These are things that we easily overlook. But where our attention is being drawn today, that we remember Lord's wife. She was a woman of influence. She was a woman from a wealthy background. But she allowed Sodom to enter her. In this age we are living in, we have become so lukewarm and cold that we have easily overlooked the world entering into us. May the Lord help us. May the Lord have mercy on us. May the Lord wash us and remove every form of Egypt and the world from our lives. When we look at nature, we see the fish who is living in the sea. The sea is salty. But when you catch a fish from the sea and you cut it open, the fish is not salty. The fish remains what it is. Why? Because it is living in the sea of the world, but the salt of the world in the sea has not entered that fish. And that is how we as believers should be. We are in this world, but we are not of the world. So the world is not inside us. We are walking as pilgrims and as strangers on this earth. Awaiting our time for the Lord to, to take us home. To glorify us. Hallelujah. So the world will not be in us. The salt in the sea can only go into the fish when the fish dies in the sea. Why am I doing this reference? So as a believer, when you are in the world and you die to, you die in the world. You die to the things of the world. 
Yeah, when your spirit man becomes inactive to the word of God, when you have become disobedient to the commandment of the, word, the Lord, then you have died to the things of God. So then the salt of the things of the world can now enter into you. And you become a salt fish. May it not be your portion in the name of Jesus. May you be alive in the things of the Lord. May you be on fire for God. May you walk in the perfect will of God. May you obey the commandments of the Lord. May the Lord help us. May the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of truth, may he lead all of us. May he lead you. May he help you. May he strengthen you to walk in the will and in the perfect will of God. So that you will not die and be in the world for the world to enter you. No, it should not be your portion. Remember Lord's wife. Your soul is important. So Jesus is saying that your soul, you should not lose. I am interested in your soul. And therefore when you are remembering Lord's wife, remember the things that were happening around them. Filthiness, laziness, drunkenness, everything was happening. But you shouldn't be like her. Though all these are around you, though opposition is there, though enticing spirits are there, you can still stand to the end. You can still wage the good warfare. You can still fight and win the race. Glory be to God. And after you have fought a good fight, you have won the race. You will be crowned, you give the crown of glory. Hallelujah. May you fight that good fight. And may you win that race. And may you be crowned with the crown of glory. That when Jesus should appear, you will be ready. When you are called by the way of the grace, you will be ready as well. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord help us. As we remember Lord's wife. And watch out for coldness, carelessness, and disobedience. And what happened to the fathers in the wilderness? Stubbornness, rebellion, and disobedience. Which caused them to be delayed. A 40 day journey. Took them 40 years and they couldn't arrive. Let it not be your portion. In the name of Jesus. And when we apply it to our lives. Because of this. They were so much delayed. That they couldn't fulfill their destiny. May you not be delayed in life. Because you went out of the purpose and the will of God. Whatever is a delay. That has been set as a trap for you. For you to fall in to be delayed in life. So that you will not fulfill destiny. May it be removed from your path. May that trap be removed from your life. In the mighty name of Jesus. And remember. Before that sweet smelly fragrance will come out. You have to go through the furnace. You have to go through the process. You have to go through the test. Without a test, there is no testimony. So when you go through the test, you will come out with a testimony. Stay strong. Stay in the will of God. And obey His commandments. May the Lord help all of us. In Jesus' name. As we close, let's pray. And our prayer is, Oh Lord, wherever... I have been stubborn, I have been rebellious and disobedient to your word. Wherever I have gone cold, wherever I have been careless, oh Lord have mercy and reignite your fire in me. Re Kindle your fire in me. In the name of Jesus. Uh, whatever takes me out of your will and your purpose. Uh, oh Lord have mercy. Uh, and today uh, I pray oh Lord uh, for divine strength to stay in your will. In the name of Jesus. Somebody lift your voice for two minutes as we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord tonight. Uh, whatever is in my life. Uh, stubbornness, disobedience and rebellion. Uh, whatever has made me 
cold and careless in life. Uh, oh Lord, have mercy. Uh, I pray, oh Lord, that you reignite your fire in me. Uh, set me on fire and let me burn for you. Uh, in the name of Jesus, let me be hot for you. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, whatever takes me out of your will. Uh, tonight, in the name of Jesus, I pray for divine strength uh, to stay in your will. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you tonight. We thank you for your word that has come forth to remember us, to make us alert of the times we are living in and the things that can easily make us fall out of your will. Strengthen all of us. Keep us in your will. In the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for answer prayer. Amen and amen. God bless you. Remember Lord's wife. Tell your neighbor, remember Lord's wife. Remember Lord's wife. God bless you for joining us tonight. Have a wonderful evening and a great and blessed weekend ahead. And we'll meet on Sunday from 9.30. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shalom.